Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, my feet hurt. Are we almost at the restaurant? I wanted to take a taxi, but oh no, you insisted on saving the 50 cents Wasn't and walking. Wasn't the 50 cents at all. Uh, tell me another. I will. So happens I like walking with you. I thought you said your feet hurt. Well, it's these New York sidewalks. They're as hard as, as sidewalks. That's strange. I thought they were as hard as marshmallows. Besides which, walking gives me an appetite. When I go to a restaurant with you, I like to take an appetite along. Very handy. Do you uh, like my taste in the restaurant? Your restaurants taste delicious, darling. Thank you. Are we almost there? Three more winces and six more pinches, and we'll be there. Good. One little, two little, three little winces, four little, five little, six little pinches. One little... Oh, here we are. Restaurant Luigi, Italian. Very swanky looking. What's swanky looking about it? Oh, the revolving door and those drapes in the window so you can't see inside. Well, now, you certainly don't think that I'd take you to eat in a goldfish bowl. Well, you? sometimes you do treat me as if I were a guppy. Well, then come along, guppy, and watch your step. I am watching it. You never took me to eat here before, did you, David? No, I guess I haven't. Is it really good? No, it is terrible. That's why I brought you here. Right. David, hmm? is this Luigi? The Ouija's? Darling, the needle is stuff. I mean, is this the famous Luigi's where the important actors and people eat? Yep, this is it. If I get a table, you don't. Well, I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's try. Well, if you insist, but I warn you. Well, in we go. David, it's packed. It's a very popular restaurant. Hard to get in from the door. I never saw so many people. Just wait till you night. taste the food. It's wonderful. Well, that's just it. I'll probably have to wait for hours. Ah, nonsense. Nonsense. David, will you look? We are the 40th in a line of, of 40 at least. It's hopeless. No, we'll get a table. Yes, tomorrow for breakfast, maybe. We can't even get near the hat now check. stop worrying. I'm not you? worrying. I'm Excuse hungry and my feet hurt. We'll just get past this mob. Excuse me, please. Pushing won't speed things along. Excuse oh, I'm, me, sorry. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me, I just want to get through. I didn't You mean coming, it. Claudia? David, listen, we better take our turn. Well, just do what I say for once. You haven't made a reservation. Well, what would I make you? a reservation for? Well, there's no harm dreaming. I don't see why making a reservation is against a man's principles. I don't, honestly, I just I beg don't. Your pardon. Nobody makes a reservation in this restaurant. Why not? It's not that kind of a restaurant. It isn't? You either get a table here or you don't. Well, that makes sense. I guess we don't. Well, I told you that we would get a table. David, who do you think you are anyway, Mr. Big? Mm hmm, exactly. Well, I know you better than that. I'm your wife, remember? Hey, what's gone into you? You're not the kind that goes pushing his way through a line. You're always telling me not to. No, this is different. Of course it is. It's you. Do you or do you not want to eat? My feet hurt. Then you want to eat. We'll feed your feet. Come along. I'm going to check my hat. Oh, excuse me. I'm oh, awfully sorry. Really? Excuse me, please. Oh, some people. That was my fault. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, is it all right? It is not. I'm sorry. Stop pulling me. I'm... Here we are. Oh. <sighs> As if we played three innings of football. Innings is baseball. Baseball, too. This better be a good restaurant. It is. Look, hey, look, 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 see? Oh. Charles Boyer. And there's Madeline Carroll over there. Mm-hmm. Look. Yeah, I see, I see. Well, that settles it. No table for folks like us. Oh, look who's here. Good evening, Mr. Norton. Oh, good evening, Jeanette. Long time no see. Yeah, I've been pretty busy. Well, we missed you. This is Mrs. Norton? Mm, that's right. Ah, oh, so pleased to meet you, Mrs. Norton. Yes, 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 so am I. Did you get that hospital contract, Mr. Norton, the Long Island job? Yeah, sure thing. Ah, oh, that's good news. Do you mean to tell me that I haven't been here in such a long time? At least three weeks. Three weeks. We were starting to wonder where you were. I'll take your hat. <laughs> no, thanks. See you later. Have a nice dinner, Mrs. Norton. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, this way, darling. What's the matter? You look funny. I do. Yeah, kind of blank. Well, I feel kind of blank. David, hey, she, she didn't give you a hat check. Well, um, I don't need one. Well, you have to have a hat check to get your hat back. Anybody who owns a hat knows that. Not with Jeanette, you don't. Not with Jeanette. I am beginning to think there is more to this than meets the eye. Oh, you're right. A great deal more. 
Well, maybe you better tell me. It's very simple. Jeanette is the girl with the electric eye. The what? If you don't belong, or if you're a passe or a stranger here at Luigi, you get a hat check. But if you belong and you're one of the bunch and you've been accepted, why, the electric eye winks and you enter with no hat check. Then you mean you're one of the bunch. You uh, don't believe it of me. David, Luigi's is a restaurant of big shots. And uh, you don't consider your husband a big shot? Well, that's nice to know. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean Im- important people eat here. Actors and presidents' wives and, and writers and... And architects. At least one I know of. Well, why don't you ever tell me? Tell you what? That you're important. That the, the electric eye winks at you. That you don't need a hat check. That... Oh, you wouldn't have believed me. Why? You don't believe me right now. Of course I believe you. I think. You think? So this is what goes on in New York while I, I sit up in Eastbrook. You're running around New York being important and, and rubbing shoulders. Yes, that's all I do. Rub so- shoulders. David, you, you really aren't just my husband, are you? And uh, just exactly what does that mean? Well, I'm sort of seeing you differently all at once. Impersonally, like, like a stranger. To a stranger, you're... You're a very handsome young man who's slated to be one of our foremost architects. Oh, that, that's well. what you are. <laughs> you are. No. I mean, I, I knew it all along, but I didn't really know it, if you know what I mean. I'm not sure, but I think so. It's sort of as if I'd lost the forest for the trees or the haystack for the needle. Now that, that clarified everything very nicely. I'm just so used to thinking of you as being the husband to my wife that I really didn't see you in relation to the world. You see what I mean? I think you're very hungry. How'd you know? You're a little delirious. Now, come on, I'll get you some food. (sighs) Somehow it still just doesn't make sense. Luigi's restaurant, so famous, and you walking in like a tycoon in full blow. That is a tornado. Oh, Mr. Norton, good evening. Good evening, Luigi. Uh, Do you have a spare table for us? I'll have one for you, Mr. Norton, in a moment. Good. Just as soon as that corner party finishes their coffee. Uh, this is my wife, Luigi, Mrs. Norton. Well, nice meeting you, Mrs. Norton. First time you've been here? Yes, it is the first time. I hope you'll come again often. Well, We'll be ready for you in a moment, Mr. Norton. Uh, thank you, Luigi. Well, I still just can't believe it. Well, you're practically a celebrity. Oh, it's not that bad. Bad? It's wonderful. I'm going to fall in love with a whole new part of you. Not just because I happen to eat here occasionally, and so I'm recognized. No, just because you're my husband and I love you already. Claudia, we're we're surrounded by people. Not ashamed of loving you, not a bit. Shh. Oh, David, I like this place. I even like the hat check girl who says you belong. Jeanette is a very famous hat check girl. She practically runs this restaurant. As as a matter of fact, now you mention it, I, I have heard of her. I don't blame them for making a fuss over you. There aren't many men worth it. Oh, there's Luigi waving to us now. The table must be ready. Come Can't on. possibly be for us. All these people came first. Your table is ready. Here we are. This table all right, Mr. Norton? Oh, this, this table's fine, Luigi. How's your wife? Any day now, we'll have a son. Congratulations in advance. Thank you. I'll send the waiter over with the menu in just a moment. No, no rush. <clears throat> Well, darling? Oh, David, I must admit, there are times when it's very pleasant to be married to somebody who's a somebody and not just a husband. Oh, David, I never had such a delicious dinner. We certainly were waited on hand and foot, weren't we? I loved it, David, every hand and foot of it. Mr. Norton this, Mr. Norton that. No hat check for your hat. Now, now, come on, come on, we'll miss our train. We haven't got much time left. I just had to pick up my hat from Jeanette. Good night, Mr. Norton. Come again soon. Oh, we certainly will, Luigi. Everything was fine. And uh, good night to you. Good night, Mrs. Norton. Good night. Now, wait a minute. I got my hat. Here we are. Uh, My hat, please, Jeanette. Uh, Your hat check, please. (laughs) Uh, Hello. You're not... You're not Jeanette. Uh, No, No. Jeanette had a rush out sudden. Your hat check, please. I see. Uh... <clears throat> well, uh, I, uh, 
I don't have a hat check, you see. Yeah, but listen, you must have a hat check if you checked your hat. Well, Jeanette just just took my hat. You see, she she knows me. Oh no, she didn't go and do that again. I beg your pardon. Uh, do what? It's okay if she stays here to give the hats back. But here I am holding the bag and no hat check. Well, just look for the one without any check, and that'll be Mr. Norton. Yes, sir. Uh, I tell you, it's a, it's a gray hat with a, with a black band. Hmm. I've got 20 of them at least. 20? 20. Well, mine, uh, mine has no check. That... that Jeanette, how many times have I told her? Friends or no friends, you got to give hat checks. Uh, let me see. Um... Oh, it, it, it might be that hat right there. Uh, is this one here? Yes, yes. N- no, the next one. That, that oh. looks like it. And no hat check on it. It could be. You better try it on. Thank you. David, it's a peanut. Take it off. Mister, you might as well start trying them all on. Oh, I hope we won't miss our train. Lordy me, there are at least 20 hats here, all without check. Oh. Just wait till I get that, Jeanette. We'll have a riot here. Everyone trying on everyone else's hat. Uh, Look, miss, I, I have a train to catch. Could you please... David, she's doing her best. Darling, wouldn't wouldn't you love to be just Mr. Nobody, who's given a hat check and gets his hat back? Hmm. Very funny. Very funny. The red cooler that greets you around the corner from anywhere today extends an invitation to pause and refresh with ice-cold Coca-Cola. And you accept that invitation with pleasure day after day. You can respond to a similar invitation right in your own home if you keep your refrigerator filled with Coke. The family icebox can be your private cooler, a white cooler that holds both household refreshment and the key to friendly hospitality. Ice-cold Coca-Cola. Well, hello, Joe. Well, David, I hope you get your hat back. Yeah, if I don't, I'll keep it under my hat. That'll be one thing I'll never live down with Claudia. (laughs) She certainly got a kick out of that dinner from start to finish. (laughs) Didn't she, though? One of the nicest things about the girl, it seems to me, is that she's so completely unspoiled and natural. Well, that's uh, that's what makes it such fun, doing things with her, even if it turns out the way you don't expect. I'll bet you 20 cents, Joe, she'll even manage to have a good time at the concert. Mm, What concert? I haven't reminded her yet, but uh, we have tickets for the local musicale in Eastbrook. What's more, we have to use the tickets. Um, tickets to a local musicale. Mm-hmm. Sounds pretty grim. Oh, it is pretty grim. I'm fond of music, but I don't like concerts any more than Claudia does, even when they're good. I think I know what you mean. Well, with Claudia, it's bound not to be as bad as it sounds. Something tells me there'll be some kind of excitement to it. Something tells me the same thing, so I'll drop by and see what happens. And as I was saying, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.